In a previous video, I talked about how to calculate the maximum cable length for resistance. In this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate R1 plus R2. You can calculate the R1 plus R2 to let you know what the resistance of the circuit should be at the time of the test, and then calculate it to allow for the temperature when the circuit is under load. So this is the formula for R1 plus R2. We take the tabulated values for R1 plus R2 in milliohms per meter from table I1 of the on-site guide. Multiply by the length of the circuit and then multiply by a correction factor and then divide by 1000. If the cable size is not shown in the on-site guide, then the information can be obtained from the manufacturer. The manufacturers usually quote the values in ohms per kilometer rather than milliohms per meter, but it's basically the same thing. So to calculate what the R1 plus R2 will be at the time of the test, we can use the correction factors on the next page in the on-site guide on table I2, which gives correction factors for various ambient temperatures. However, if the ambient temperature is 20 degrees C, then the factor is 1, because the values for milliohms per meter are based on 20 degrees C. Then to calculate the R1 plus R2 at the operating temperature, we can use the correction factor on the next page on table I3, which gives us a factor of 1.2, which will basically add 20%. So for the same reason that we subtract 20% from the maximum permitted ZS, when calculating R1 plus R2, we can use the correction factor to add that 20% to allow for the increase in the temperature of the circuit when it's under load. So this calculation can be useful if you ever need to verify what the R1 plus R2 should be when carrying out electrical testing. And you can also use this to verify the measured ZS by adding the calculated value for R1 plus R2 to the measured value for ZE. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see the links to the other videos on my channel.